guys, welcome once again to It's Time to Play, and as always, we're going to be taking a classic game from your childhood, and we're going to relive some of the nostalgia, talk a little bit of nonsense, but most importantly, we're going to have some fun. And today the game is Teddy Boy, and this came out in Sega Master System in 1985, and uh, it's a lot of fun, so let's get into it, guys. So as you can see, you play this character here, Teddy. He's uh, strikingly similar, actually, to Alex the Kid. Either he's supposed to be Alex the Kid, or he's supposed to be uh, a teenager on the way to his bar mitzvah. Or he's, like, rocking a cool-looking hat here. Uh, but either way, it's uh, a cool-looking hero uh, for a really colourful game. Uh, the object in this game is pretty simple. You just need to clear every level of all the enemies, and then uh, you'll carry on. Now, all these enemies are uh, spawn out of dice. Um, I'll show you that a little bit later, actually, because all the dice have uh, disappeared. Once once they all spawn, the dice disappear. Um, but yeah, this game is actually unique, as even though it's a single-screen game, it kind of works as if it's the level's in a sphere. Uh, the game scrolls vertically and horizontally in order to fit everything in a, a single screen. So even though the game is quite linear, it actually gives you the illusion that it's uh, a lot larger than what it actually is. And uh, almost like it's uh, an open world, which is a unique design, uh, especially for a 1985 game, and one that I always enjoyed. And uh, as you can see, not only is the char main character a lookalike to uh, Alex from Alex the Kid and Miracle World, but a lot of these enemies uh, look very, very similar too. So I don't know if Alex Kid the Miracle World uh, took a lot of... I mean, I, I assume they took... Um, some inspiration from this game, but I don't know if Teddy Boy was originally supposed to be Teddy Boy in Miracle World and they just changed the name, or if they just got some ideas from this game. Either way, uh, it's pretty unique to see how similar both games are to each other. And now uh, we've almost cleared this level here. Uh, graphically, I think the game looks really, really good. Uh, Sega Master System always uh, made good use of their color palette, and uh, that's one thing I think they were stronger than the NES one sometimes. Uh, it's, yeah, I think the game is really colourful and nice looking, especially for something from 1985. Um, there's also all sorts of cool gimmicky things, like as you can see we've got this bonus level here, and uh, you're on a treasure hunt basically, you've got to collect as uh, many cool uh, rare items as you possibly can, they'll add to your score multiplier. And uh, unfortunately, uh, you're not supposed to touch a snail, otherwise you don't get a decent bonus, and uh, that's unfortunate. We didn't get any points from all those treasures. That's uh, a real shame. So it's called the Dendon or whatever, but uh, it's just a snail. I don't know why they give them such funky names. It's the same with uh, the Zelda manual, actually, not going on a tangent, but uh, you'll see something that looks like a frog or a snail or whatever, and they give it some kind of weird, crazy name. It's stupid. But anyway... Uh, we're in level uh, 3 now. I usually struggle in this level. Uh, this game can actually be quite tactical, guys. Um, the difference between winning or losing can be where you place yourself on a platform in order to shoot stuff. And uh, especially for a game, again, around its time, I know I carry on about that, but there's a lot of strategy involved in order to navigate these levels. And uh, for example, you don't want to open too many entrances up. Uh, to this little uh, cove that we're in now, otherwise we can get attacked from both sides. So uh, common sense is definitely involved when you're uh, navigating these levels, that's for sure. Uh, you, you're encouraged to be careful but quick as well, which is a catch-22 I always say in these old games. You've got a little timer, as you can see, in the lower middle of the screen. I think you lose a life if you take too long to navigate a level, so you really do have to get a move on. And, uh, I don't know how I'm supposed to get back up there, actually. I feel like I'm... Oh, here we go. We can go down here. Ah! That's stupid. Anyway, we've got one life left here. We need to protect it. It's gonna... Be cutting it really close here. And, uh, if you stay too long on a platform, uh, the platform will dissolve, as you can see there. So you're encouraged to move around a lot, which is... Also definitely part of the challenge. Otherwise, you could just camp and, uh... Spawn shoot enemies, I suppose. There we go, we're up to another level now. So this is a really fun experience, I can't recommend this game enough, it is a fun platforming game. And one thing that I think has been overlooked a little bit too. Now this was also available in the Sega Master System on cartridge form, and uh, on one of those little card sliders, if that makes sense. So um, yeah, again, well only the early games are available on those little... Uh, slide disc thing, so, uh, yeah, this is one of the Master System originals, as far as I know. And, uh, I'm just trying to be real careful here, because I'm pretty sure we're on our last life now. Now, as you can notice, as I brought them up before, there's those dice there, the enemies spawn out of them. Kind of, sort of, like, in a gauntlet-esque sort of style. Oh, here we go, level 5 already. 
And uh, I don't think I've been up to this level too often, actually. I was hesitating to review this game and uh, play this game, not because uh, I don't like it, but just simply because I'm so terrible and I didn't think it would make for a good video, but uh, well, I'm just happy that I've been able to show you a bunch of content now. I'm, I'm satisfied, I think. I hope you guys are too. As I said, the music in this game is pretty nice too, but it is going to drive you nuts after a while, so it's probably for the best that you're not going to have uh, super long play sessions when you play Teddy Boy. And, uh, we go, we've got these snail things. I've forgotten what they're supposed to be called again. Why can't we just call them snails? Oh man, this is tricky. Trickier than what it needs to be, I think. Oh, here we go. I think we might be okay. We're pretty close. Alright, I think this is literally the furthest I've ever been now. Oh, well, we haven't finished yet, but I'm pretty close. <laughs> there we go. Awesome! I've never seen this next level before. Oh, crap! They're just coming out of nowhere. I might just have to camp here for a little minute. Oh yeah, of course the platform's gonna dissolve. You're a some bitch. Oh, again. Maybe they dissolve quicker the further you get along, just to add to the challenge. I don't know. It feels like you can't stand on it for more than like two seconds. It's crazy. Can we stand here? Is it gonna? Can you stand on like a single ledge? Actually, it's cool. I don't know if they randomly spawn out of the dice, but may maybe only a certain amount of enemies can uh, be on the screen before stuff starts to spawn. So if I shoot one here... Oh, well, he's just eaten me. And it looks like that's game over. We're not going to find out. Well, guys, this is Teddy Boy. It's an awesome platform game. You must play it if you like the genre. And uh, as always, guys, if you like what we do, please share, subscribe, tell your friends about us, and we'll see you next time.